What's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV and in this video I want to address whether legacy automakers are really screwed with their EV programs. As you may have seen yesterday, the EPA came out with their estimated range for the Porsche Taycan Turbo and to much of everyone's surprise, it came in at 201 miles. This came as a big surprise to many in the EV community because Porsche had been leading people to believe that the range for this vehicle was going to come in closer to 300 miles of range. And so we're talking about nearly a 100 mile difference on what they had been leading us to believe. This makes me incredibly concerned for Legacy Auto because they have yet to produce a vehicle that is competitive to Tesla's range. And we all know that in December 2019, EV range is key. King. But before I go into why traditional auto could be screwed, I want to preface this video by stating a few things. Number one, as I stated in my Audi e-tron video review, 200 miles is sufficient for people's daily commutes. The second is I really love the offerings of most EVs on the market currently. I've had a chance to review most of them this year and they all have their place in the market. But when you take a look at how many years these automakers have had to develop a viable market product, how far non-Tesla EVs go on a single charge and their respective miles per kilowatt hour, it's difficult for me to not see them as a middle school track team up against Olympians. This is particularly true for the Taycan Turbo, Porsche's performance Taycan. The starting price of the Taycan Turbo is nearly $151,000. For this price, Porsche should have had zero issues addressing both a competitive range and performance. Now you might be thinking about the Taycan's 800 volt architecture that allows for consistent high performance. But the thing is though, if this car starts off at 201 miles, there is a very good chance that if you're driving that car in a high performance manner, that it is not going to get even close to that 200 miles of range. In fact, it's probably going to get half of that. Let's keep in mind that if you're gonna be pushing this vehicle in a high performance manner, you're also going to be charging this vehicle more. And since we're nearly about to hit the year 2020, the charging infrastructure for these high performance cars is not as dense as what it is for gasoline. So it makes it a little bit more challenging and limits the use case for this Taycan for the price. And this is not just a high-end performance EV problem. I'm seeing this across the board with legacy automakers. It's remarkable how these competitors are using such a large battery pack, yet so inefficient with their range. The other thing that I'll note about this list here is that there's a few vehicles on here that have yet to go to production. And if the EPA range comes in similar to what these other vehicles are who are in production, I would suspect that vehicles like the Mach-E, the Polestar 2, as well as the Mercedes EQC will not come in close to what these automakers have been touting regarding their range. And there is one big reason why I think this is likely to be the case. All of these vehicles, as far as I can tell, are using LG Chem's batteries. Furthermore, no EV that is in production to date has managed to surpass the 2012 Model S 85 kilowatt hour battery range of 265 miles. Tesla's dominance can be further seen when you line up their top end range and performance vehicles with their competitors. The vehicles that consistently have the highest miles per kilowatt hour are vehicles that come from Tesla. Another interesting point to mention is that Tesla is expected to introduce their next generation batteries at their upcoming battery and powertrain investor day in early 2020. This is very likely to further the gap between Tesla and their competitors. Why are legacy automakers so far behind? I think there's two reasons for this. Number one, they were very slow to start their EV R&D. Elon said it best during a recent speech. But I, I think it's always difficult when, you know, the. There's a lot of momentum around uh, an old technology. Uh, there's just a lot of infrastructure, a lot of uh, capital, and that kind of thing that's tied up in the uh, the older technology. Um, and uh, when this, when you have a new technology, the market is unproven. So then you say, like, okay, should is, does it really make sense to place a bet on this technology that's unproven? Number two, they're not developing their own cells. Mark Ellis from Sandy Monroe's team explains it this way. Why are we not seeing more competitive range with, with EVs from traditional OEMs? Because they're buying them from somebody else. Okay. 
But, I mean, here's the guys with the points. Mm -hmm. And who are they? Oh, the Jaguar I Pace, who created basically um, a kludge, but yeah. they, they went and got different people to, to yeah. help them out because they didn't have the internal. But their people stood over and watched them over sure. their shoulder. And they get um, 367 points. And here's the, um, um, the well, they lumped all the S Teslas together, <laughs> which I think was a was a cheat because mm -hmm, the, yeah. the S and the X would drag the three down. Sure. But uh, but they're at 363. Mm -hmm. And then let's look at the Chevy Bolt. Uh, Chevy Bolt. Mm, 89. 89 points. That's it. So the next, the the one that's uh, that's right below the uh, the Tesla is uh, the BMW i3 and that's 172. So to go from, you know, uh, 360 something down to 89, <laughs> that, that means that's very telling. Uh, that's mm -hmm. a very telling uh, chart. So Related. Do you think that in order to be competitive with Tesla's range, you have to build your own, create your own chemistry, produce your own battery cells? That would be a 10 year project. Okay. So, you know, there are going to be leaders in the battery industry and the you, a lot of the electrochemistries are under patents. They're going to have to be licensed. Whoever comes out on top is probably going to win. But just due to the sheer volume of batteries that are going to be needed in the next five years, you, you know, you basically have three or four mm -hmm. major battery companies that are out there. My advice to legacy automakers, while tripling down on future battery R&D and producing their own battery cells, they need to find a way to license out Tesla's older battery tech to shorten the immediate distance that exists. Because right now, legacy automakers are being lapped several times over in this metaphorical track meet. Though this may be seen by legacy automakers as empowering their competition, I think the question that they should be asking internally is, can they afford not to license out the market leader's battery tech and still win in this EV competition? Sean Mitchell, All Things EV, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll catch everyone on the next one.